Hey everyone. Hi. So uh, thanks, Jonathan, and, th uh, and uh, before I start, a big thank you to, to Paul and Storm and, and Joko and the, all the helper monkeys and everyone for putting this all together and especially getting me out here from Boston. <laughs> which involved a frantic 6 a.m. flight change, and, uh, <clears throat> and it was quite a, and they did a great job of it, and so I really appreciated that. Um, so people are, people are, uh, generally when I do one of these, there are a lot of people who are seeing me in person for the first time. Um, and I think that although intellectually everyone knows I'm not a stick figure, <laughs> there's still that moment of surprise where I meet someone and they're like, hi, Good to meet you, and then you know, sort of like, so I, and you're a real person, and, and you can see the thing like, well, of course I didn't think you was a stick figure, but so, so, but no, I am, I am not a stick figure, and I also don't wear a hat. I have trouble finding one my size. Um, so not all of the things that are in the comic are actually about me. However, I did build a ball pit in my house. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that and uh, how you can do the same thing yourself, some of the, the problems that I encounter and, uh, and how to work around that. Um, but first, I, uh, I wanted to uh, share the results of a few calculations I've done. See, this is my, uh, my first time on a cruise ship, and I was, and when I, the, my first look at it was when I was doing the uh, schematic diagram of it that you may have seen on the, the posters and the screens are in the chat. <laughs> Which, by the way, I had to re- I did not have the nice side view cutaway that, uh, that is helpfully up there when I was doing it. I had to reconstruct it from the individual deck diagrams, placing them on top of each other in Photoshop, and then stretching them to try to fit, because it turns out they're not quite to scale. Um, <laughs> If anyone tried to construct a ship just using those diagrams, it would not float. <laughs> but so I was blown away by like, you know, just in the, the, the very obvious how big it is. Um, it, it's it's mind-boggling that something this big can move. And so one of the first things that I started to wonder about and tried to work out is what would it take to make it fly? <laughs> And the answer, after I got through a bunch of research, was a little under 3,000 extreme heavy lift helicopters, each one with a one-inch strand of Kevlar cable. Um, they have to be arranged in like a layered setup, but far enough apart that the downwash didn't throw them all over the place. Um, or, I didn't realize, a simpler approach is a half-kilometer wide balloon. <laughs> Let's see, and then, um, and then I just started, I, I figured out the internal volume of the ship, and uh, then the first thing I worked out was, if the ship were filled with meat, <laughs> it would be 600 billion calories, and, and sustain everyone on board for about 250 years. And, and, then, and, and then I realized that the ship is filled with meat. <laughs> Which led me to my next calculation. <laughs> Namely, if, uh, if everyone in this theater and the rest of the sea monkeys and performers were somehow caught in a carnivalesque situation, <laughs> stranded at sea, um, with no hope of rescue, we could survive by eating the other passengers. <laughs> for 400 to 500 days. <laughs> Although we should try to keep that quiet until that actually happens. <laughs> so, I, uh, I have a blog that uh, Jonathan mentioned, What If, which is where I, uh, where I answer these kinds of uh, hypothetical questions using physics. And, and, uh, and I started it I don't, I do cartoons on the internet, but I actually have a, a physics background. And for a while I worked at NASA on, uh, <laughs> and 
and I worked on robotic navigation. Was one of my things. So my job was to make like we had a demo robot, and it was about the size of R two D two. It had a nice Omni wheel setup, so it could like sort of strafe in any direction. And my job was to make it not run into walls. And I spent my day making the robot run into walls. <laughs> um, and I and I worked there for a, not very long, for the better part of a year, um, until I either quit or was let go. It, Depends on who you ask. Um, I was working on a contract basis, and when one of my contracts ran out, they said, we're not going to renew this contract, but we're going to, you know, but we could find you another contract here if you want. And at the same time, I had been drawing these comics, and uh, and they, I started to sell stuff online, and that had been, and I realized I could maybe not get a new contract for a little while and just uh, draw comics for a living, and I've been doing that ever since. And so I wasn't, I wasn't like, I wasn't the best employee since I was, I had just gotten really excited about doing comics right around the time I started working there. And I, I did not draw any comics while I was at work on the job, but I definitely spent a lot of time like thinking and, and scribbling down ideas and, and uh, but the one thing that I, my, my best memory from NASA was that I, at one point, so we had this robot, it was about the size of, like I said, you know, R2-D2 size, and it had sort of a stock with a large head on it that had a bunch of cameras. And it was pretty powerful for a demo robot that was supposed to just, you know, zoom around in an office. So one day, I got the, uh, I got an office chair, and a length of Cat5 cable, and I fashioned a lasso. <laughs> And I got a laptop that was controlling the robot and, and commanded it to move over to me. And what I had been doing was teaching the robot to, I, one of the things I taught it was a sort of generic wander algorithm. So it would just go and explore a space. And I took the lasso, looped it over the robot's head, wrapped it around my hand, pulled my feet up on the office chair, got the laptop on my, and then said, wander, and then hung on. <laughs> and it accelerated out into the, uh, you know, across the room, and I'm like swinging along, towing along <laughs> behind it, out into the hallway, and then down this long corridor of this big, uh, big office building we worked in, which was generally pretty quiet. And I'm going past the rooms where each person's working and clinging on, you know, we're, we're, we're an office chair, it's moving pretty fast. And, <laughs> And, and, and every time I go around a turn, I'll get swung way out, you know, oh, hang on, go past the office where, uh, where uh, the, the people who are paying me to work there are, and then they look out and see that, and, uh, and, and I didn't make this connection until later, but that was, it was the next contract I was up for that did not get renewed. <laughs> but I did, that was, uh, as, I, as I passed the office, I was thinking, okay, why am I not? Why am I doing this? Why am I not working? And it occurred to me that I could claim my code was compiling. 